Hello everybody, uh, this work has been done by me in uh, collaboration with uh, Stefania Romic from NIST and uh, Daniele Rovera from uh, OP and a lot of other things that are written over there, other places. So what uh, is this talk going to be about uh, is uh, about measuring the time difference that you have in two one PPS located in two different places of your lab. This is generally what I'm going to talk about. Why did we do this work? Right now the BIPM is creating is a living document guidelines for time transfer and uh, the goal of the community is to get calibration uncertainty that are going to be below one nanosecond. But when we are measuring time differences of PPSs, we get, uh, we have found discrepancy that are above 100 picosecond and we don't know why we get them. And this contribution begins to be significant for the overall badge. So, what is for us a 1 PPS? A 1 PPS is an electrical signal that is going from 0 volt to 2.5 volt. And uh, over, a 50, uh, over 50 ohm, and uh, you define the position of the timing events that are the green, the green invisible circle in the picture are the moment in which the signal is crossing the threshold of one volt. So this definition is very common, but there are other definitions of the one PPS. We are okay with that, and this is at the end not impacting the, the final meaning, uh, final findings of this work. Then this is a typical timing system handling one PPS. And in the system, we can see three different uh, player. We have the source, we have the receivers, and we have the distribution. So the source, uh, it can be whatever is a, uh, a PPS, uh, see a Pico stepper or uh, a one PPS generator. The receiver are the user that are using the one, the one PPS. So we mentioned the two way modem, but you can have a time interval counter, you can have a, a, a time code generator, NTP generator, and for sure a two-way station. The third player are, is the distribution network that is made by two different elements. One is the one that is transferring the signal from one place to the other one, that are either the cable or the optical fiber, and the other one is the pulse distribution amplifier that is creating multiple copy of your one PPS. In case this is a regenerative unit, actually is most of the time better to see it as a receiver followed by a multiple number of sources. So we select to bring our investigation on, on certain possible causes of delay uncertainty. And so we search for distortion that could be due to bandwidth limitation or to mismatch, rise, but we investigate also about rise time and uh, uh, we consider this to be another possible cause of uncertainty and threshold settings. Okay, in, uh, in our search, uh, the first thing that we did, uh, it was to do a wonderful simulation. So in this simulation, we uh, simulate uh, what is the behavior of a coaxial cable when you apply to this coaxial cable a 1 PPS that has a rising edge that is variable. So the 1 PPS will, through all the presentation, will always be referenced as the moment in which the signal is crossing the 1 volt. And so our so the, 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 this, the picture up there is just to show that we think we did a good job modeling because I will find a pointer somewhere. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, 
what is, so what is uh, the result of the simulation that is the, the plot over there is basically showing that uh, in the simulation, so without using any instrument, you will get uh, a delay of the 1 PPS that changes with uh, the change of the slope of the 1 PPS getting into the cable. And this change is significant because it goes up to 500 picosecond when you use a common RG58 uh, cable, long 10 meter, and you go from an unbelievably fast pulse that is, uh, uh, that is 100 picosecond, that is the beginning of the graph, when you go and you move up to 10 nanosecond. So we wanted to see this in reality. So we get a bunch of cable, and to begin with, we take a look with an oscilloscope. So this slide is not about doing time measurement, is just to look stuff with an oscilloscope. We arbitrarily rearrange all the traces in order to make them to be well visible. And, uh, and here we introduce the concept uh, that we have two different sources. We have a fast source that, is that has a rise time that is around uh, 460 picosecond. And then we have another source which rise time, its rise time is 8.6 nanoseconds. So 460 pico and 8.6, so you can see it basically with uh, a little bit more than an order of magnitude. The two pictures looks like, uh, from the two pictures, it looks like you have a bigger impact uh, on the faster edges than on the slow one, but the two, there is a factor of five between the two, and so actually the impact that you have on the bottom one that is on the faster is smaller than the one that you have uh, on the slower. And uh, in the graph, uh, uh, since of the way that the first pulse is generated, we have directly also the output of the generator. Okay, we did this first measurement just to check what we are doing. This is not still related to validate what we were showing before. So we measured the delay of the cable that are within our testing pool. And to do that, we use the fast edge generator. The setup is, uh, will I get the laser? Pointer on, yes. Okay, this is the setup that we have used. I just have a sketch Okay, so we have a, a, a measurement time interval counter. It, this is, you know, is uh, discovering the spinning wheel. Uh, so we have a generator here, and uh, we can connect it directly to the stop, or we can put one of our cable under test between this output. The uh, 3326 A is going to be our pulse generate distributor generator distributor because it's generating is giving us the ability to generate multiple pulses so and this regenerative pda is actually the source that is going to make uh, the 460 picosecond uh, rise time match so here there are the measurement and we perform this measurement using two different time interval counter we use a uh, a slower, slower front-end uh, time interval counter that is uh, this one from Stanford Research, and we use this one that, that is faster, made by GuyTech, and, uh, and we measure the cable delay in this way. Okay, the differences, I'm sorry for the pain, the differences between uh, the, two, the, the, measure, the two time interval counter are kind of small, but they are significant, and, and they should be out of the, the noise that you get, the jitter is 15 picosecond, and when we, when we are measuring the cable, basically we are doing a measurement closure just to make sure that there is nothing that you think that is going to be in common mode that is going to impact. Okay, this is the setup that we use to go to try to see what we have seen in the, in the simulation. So here, Instead of using one source, that is the one that we were using before, we are also using the slow source, that is a direct output of the generator. So here you go up with the 8.6 nanosecond, and here you go up with the 460 picosecond. We differentiate to take in account everything that was, that was going on with the shorter cable that we have in our pool, and those are the results. 
So what you would expect in this table, forget one second about the simulation, you would expect to do not see any delay change when you're doing whatever. You would like to see zero all over here. Because when you measure the delay of this cable, you just wanted to measure the delay of this cable. It should not matter to you what is the rising edge or what is the time interval contour that you are using. But we do get number here that are different from zero. So what is interesting, the first thing is this number that is very close to the 500 that was in the simulation. Then the ratio between these two, the two RG40, the two RG58, is pretty much one the half of the other one, so it's kind of scaling. And the third thing, very interesting, is that uh, see here we have measured also two LEX Andrews cable that have way less uh, losses. And what you can see is that here the difference of uh, delay change due to the different slope that is driving the cable is really smaller respect what you get with a cable that is five meter. So this is also making a big difference. Okay, now I'm really discovering the wheel. Uh, or, or I don't know how you, in Italy we will say I discovered the hot water, so it's something like that. So we begin from, in here we are, we wanted to show what I was saying at the beginning. So. We wanted to do a time difference between two points. So we wanted to use, a, we wanted to measure the time difference between two PPS in two points of your lab. So consider this is the system that I was talking about before, and then you have another point, and you wanted to know the time difference between A and B. So you, we call this to be the pivot technique. You have one cable that is connected somewhere in your lab, and uh, it's going to be always the same. And then you have a test cable. And you move the test cable among the point that you wanted to measure. You take a difference. And that's the difference of time between the two points. And uh, you do this. And you think things start beginning from here and going up to here is all going to be the same. Everything is going to be in common mode. And it will cancel out. So we tested. We tested. This is our setup, and uh, we have, uh, uh, back again, we have uh, a fast output that is going to be here. This is one of, I'm sorry, here is going to be where we do the fast measurement. Oh, sbagliato. Oops, oh, you already know. So then we have another point uh, where we do, we have uh, uh, one PPS going out. And so the scope of this experiment is by using a cable, you connect here, you connect here, you make the difference between the two measurement, and you're going to get the time difference between the two. Okay, so we did this, sorry for the back again, using different test cable, and we did this also by using the different time interval counter. And uh, as you can see, I just spent one, one second, the pivot is connecting to an auxiliary output that we have uh, from over here, so this is going to be to increase a little bit uh, the jitter. The number of averages is going to be the same, uh, and uh, this is still pretty much negligible. OK, those are the results. I, I begin from the end saying that what you would expect here is to get uh, a time difference between the two points that it is constant. And our rough estimation is that it is uh, 1.5 nanoseconds. Actually, if you look at this four entry, you have only one that is close to 1.5. All the other are different. And what you can see is a difference in this way, and what you can see is a difference in this way. And the difference in this way is shown in the last line. So this difference from here, from these two value to this value, is due to the fact that the cable that we use to probe in the various location as different length. And so this is something that we have already seen before in the simulation, that by changing the length of the cable, when you're going to measure a time difference between two points, and the two points are, one of these two points is with a fast one PPS and the other one is with a slow one PPS, 
you're going to get a difference. But what is also interesting is that by changing the time interval counter, the instrument that is doing the measurement, you're going to get also a difference. And this difference, back again, is not negligible. What is causing this difference? Oh, my time is going away. OK. Uh, so what is, at this point, uh, we, we point, uh, we point to, to the instrument, and we look uh, to the effect uh, of the front-end limitation. And so we, we are running another simulation. And in the simulation, we simulate uh, two rising, uh, we simulate a fast rising edge and a slow rising edge that are pretty much the two rising edges that we do to do our test. And we make those to go through a filter, a 100 megahertz slow pass filter. And what you get, probably surprising enough, is that if you go fast, you spend a certain amount of time. If you go slow, you spend more time. So, what this means is that basically when you have a low pass filter, you are going, the, the time that the signal will spend to go through this low pass filter will depend on, on, on the slope of the signal that is going through the filter. And so since uh, we have a one time interval counter that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that has less limitation in the front end, it will introduce less delay change. And uh, I'm not going to go back, but basically the cable itself is also low pass filter. So basically when you do this kind of measurement, it's kind of you have two low pass filter, one following the other one, and each of the two is giving an impact. Okay, at this point we dare to propose some best practice to reduce this uncertainty that is uh, have system with uh, fast rising edge, use cable with low loss and short as much as possible, use time interval counter with fast front end. We also suggest to define reference point in the system that are at the output of a regenerative PDA in order to get a fast edge where you're going to do the measurement and uh, if possible, also to define uh, your reference point at one output uh, of the PDA as well. Then another suggestion is that, see, the probe cable that is going to connect to the multiple places, uh, we, we think that if you can redo this cable and in order to get an active probe over here, that means if you are going to place uh, a the, the triggering circuit to be right here. And so you will have the cable, the measurement cable that is always driven by the same signal after here. So you're going to do a buffering. This is also going to improve the system because you move the burden on the head. Or in a similar way, you can use optical fiber to perform the measurement. And those are our conclusion that are the, the measurement of time difference in a system are impacted by rise time, test cable length and quality, and by the bandwidth limitation of, so by the time interval counter that you're going to use. This uncertainty that show up, they do also when you use a substitution method, because the common mode elements of the measurement system, they have differently with different 1 pps rise time. This is a work in progress, and the result of this work should be considered for calibration involving 1 pps signal. And this is the Besalta, the mountain on top of Cuneo, my hometown. Thank you very much to everybody. <laughs>